Prepare yourself guys, Chris with T3 Medias and this is the review of the new release of MOTHER! So, I uh, I want to do a whole new thing with these reviews and uh, you ever go on, on, a, on a date with somebody you ever, you ever with that significant other, maybe it's the first date and uh, you don't know what's going to happen and you're kind of excited, you're like, you just had dinner, dinner went well, let's go watch a movie and then let's, uh, you know, let's see where this goes. Uh, depending on how it works out, you know, if you're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this like this new rating system where, depending on how many times the movie might bore you and you uh, look over and y'all decide to start making out, or if the movie is so good y'all don't do that at all, you're just focused and then you know everything goes well and you know so so I'm happy. that's what I'm gonna do with this uh, with this rating system. So uh, let's work with me. Let's see if I can uh, make this happen. But anyway, let's get back to the topic. It's all about mother. And um, they finally put an exclamation point on it. All right, look, this is more than just a review. I went into the movie not knowing what I was going to think about it. Halfway through it, I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't like it. And then at the very end, I couldn't get enough of it when I finally figured out what's going on. So more than just a review, this is a explanation. I'm sure that it's already come out from the director. I haven't looked this stuff up. I'm sure the director, the writer has already made his little comments about what it's really about. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, but let me break down with uh, what this movie to me, like the Kardashians. I think that for me, that what this movie says to me was that, um, so it took a while for me to figure it out. And it, and it finally uh, dawned on me um, with Javier uh, Bardem, uh, who did a great job uh, in this movie. Who else was in this movie? Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. You had uh, Ed Harris. And then you had a bunch of other people. And then Kristen Wiig shows up. I was like, the fuck? Uh, and then Jennifer Lawrence, of course. So what's going on in this movie? Okay, for, for one, right off the bat, you got you got a, a woman that's being burnt alive. And then she's all like, you know, she got the look on her face. And she's like, fuck it, let it burn. Let it burn like Usher. And um, then there's Jennifer Lawrence. Like, hey, babe. Hey, babe. You know, come back to bed. You know, you got this whole husband and wife dynamic. It feels like they're the only two people in the world. Uh, it's very quiet out there. Very beautiful old house that they've been working on, and and it feels like uh, this like some kind of a fire happened. And she says, "I I, I restored it like, piece by piece." And it's just I don't know. I, I guess when it, I guess it felt like we went forward in time, but then it kind of felt like we're going back in time. I don't know what was going to happen in this uh, in that movie from the get go, and that's why it it just didn't feel like entertaining to me. And then you had your run-in with uh, the uh, Ed Harris character, and um, Michelle Pfeiffer came in, and things just started to kind of pick up. You, the whole time you're sitting there, you're watching this movie, and you're feeling like Jennifer Lawrence is just wanting to spend time with her husband. He's a writer. He's got writer's block. He needs the, this quiet uh, space to write and concentrate. She just wants to restore the house and please him and serve him and be a good wife. And you got all these people showing up. You don't want to turn them away. You know, they, they you know, they need help, you know, they're stranded or whatever the situation is. And for some reason, husband just doesn't want to, you know, be a bad guy. Then little by little, your wife starts to give you that little nudge and she doesn't want to be dealing with these people anymore. They're starting to outweigh their welcome. They're getting too close. They're getting, they're being too rude. They're not listening. And it's constantly just disrespecting. So it's like, you got to fucking go. And throughout this whole movie, you got, you got people just finding a way to just barge in. You got, what are they, the question that Jennifer Lawrence keeps asking is so like, does their sons show up? They're arguing, and you love him more than me, you put him in the will. Uh, Michelle Pfeiffer asking all these fucking personal questions too much. How come you ain't got no kids? And you know, eh, your husband ain't doing it right. Y'all don't know, y'all should try this position. It's like, all right, y'all gotta get out. Get out of my house. And nobody's listening to her. It's like, I've, I've heard Jennifer Lawrence say, get the hell out of my house. A million times. Then, when the uh, fight starts to break out and just shit starts hitting the fan, you got one of the uh, the, the, the jealous little brother finally kills the older brother. You know, you love him more than me. You put him in the wheel, and and they're like, oh, we got to get him to the hospital. He got his head bashed in. And it's like I, you never hear a car start. You never hear a car come in. You never hear any. How are these people getting in and out? I mean, even the even the husband leaves, takes him to the hospital and all. And then all of a sudden, now there's a funeral. There's more people showing up. Nobody leaves. Nobody. I mean, it's, it's just getting, it's constantly, they're like, it's like they're on a desert island and out in this house, in this field. 
and just and there's millions of people that just keep showing up to this damn house and they all want to meet him they all like his writing he's finally got over his writer's block and she can't get a word in you're constantly messing up i i felt like i understood what this movie was really about when people kept laughing at jennifer lawrence like your house your room the hell are you talking about? And she kept saying, this is my fucking house. Like, get out. And I figured it out when you know, the constant response to that was just indifference and just smugness. Like, uh, yeah, I uh, saw so I'm in your kitchen. I'm in your bedroom. I'm having sex. And I'm, I, know, I know there was a funeral just a minute ago, but I don't give a damn. And then one of the guests hits on her. And then she turns him down. Like, cause like, dude, my husband's right there. And the guy's like, you fucking bitch. I'm like, what the hell is the constant disrespect? I started to go, I know what this movie's really about. I know what's going on. And the clues just started coming and then it all freaking hit me. So to make the long story short, you're like, too late. Jennifer Lawrence was, I don't know if she was the Holy Spirit or Mother Nature. I'm thinking Mother Nature because the movie's called Mother. And you're like, you're screaming it. Like it's, not, it's not wise to fool with Mother Nature. I figured it all out. Um, Bardem was God. I mean, he even kind of said as much as at the end of it. But I'll get to that later. Bardem was God. Lawrence was Mother Nature. You had Michelle Pfeiffer and, uh, and, and Ed Harris show up. That's Adam and Eve. And then I don't know who the, where the devil was in this, if he was just constantly around, and but, you, but Michelle Pfeiffer was just not listening and constantly talking her husband into doing some shit and then pissing uh, the, the man uh, house. I mean, he even got angry for the first time. In his, uh, even I got scared, like, oh, shit, I thought this guy was quiet-tempered, but like, he got pissed at one point, banished him, like, get, get the hell out. Somehow they was able to weasel their way back. In you got the two sons showing up with the whole why don't you put me in the wheel bullshit, which then one son killed the other, Cain and Abel. I was like, oh my god, this whole thing is starting to make sense. Then at the funeral, all these other people are showing up. Like, where do these people come from? Again, nobody's paying attention, nobody's giving Jennifer Lawrence her respect. She's constantly, I knew she had to be Mother Nature when. No matter what the situation was, she's constantly cleaning. She's constantly, constantly, constantly cleaning. I got all this shit done. I restored this house. It was a big ass fire that uh, you know that my husband had with his ex-wife. I guess that was the kind of the backstory. Like my ex-husband used to live in this house. This is his house. He had a, a woman here. She died in the fire. Now I'm the new and I'm the new hotness. And I just restored this whole house brick by brick. And I'm awesome. And don't mess up my house. And these people just constantly come in, just messing up her house. And these two people are sitting their ass on this sink, and they won't get off the sink. And she's like, that sink is not being supported. Get off the damn sink. She turns around for five seconds, come back, they're back on the goddamn sink. And get off the sink. And they just won't listen. And at one point, I mean, this is supposed to be a funeral. And they're like, hey, look, we're back on the sink. It's fine. It's fine. It's good. And boom, the whole thing falls down. Water's everywhere. Flood. That's the flood. Had to be. I don't know about where Noah was and all that, but then they finally got to the... I mean, every little thing that happened in this movie was like could be loosely tied to the things that happened in the Bible, like step by step. It's one of those movies, just like Get Out. Like When you know what the story's about then, then you can watch the whole thing again and you can start seeing things that you didn't see before. So, um, then we get to a point where it's like, um, oh, like, oh, she finally gets pregnant. Okay, so now God, the Holy Spirit, maybe, Mother Nature, who knows, about to have a baby together. Obviously, that symbolizes Jesus. All these people are coming around. They love him. They, uh, um, uh, your, your book changed my life. Obviously, the book that they're talking about, it could be the Ten Commandments, it could be the Bible, or all this stuff. He's a writer. And then they're just like following his every words, and they're getting kind of scary. And she's pregnant. She's like, like, I want these people out of the house and I don't want them to leave. He kept saying this, like, dude, like, get these people out of your house. Now, if these people symbolize all of us, now I'm kind of glad that he didn't, you know, listen to Mother Nature and say, you know, get rid of them a long time ago. He kept forgiving us and he kept, but, but even the subtle way, like, again, when you put it in perspective, when you have a husband and a wife and a newborn baby and all these freaking people in your house. You put it in that perspective, in that little little pocket, it's like, dude, yeah, this earth is too overpopulated, dude. I'm getting the message loud and clear. We are like, this whole thing is just too much that we're doing out here. Global warming, it's getting all messed up. All this stuff that people are always arguing about, right? 
And but you, you you put it in perspective like this, and then you're like, wow, you can see it. And then you know everybody knows the story about Jesus Christ, and you know how you know he was born, he was son of God, and he pretty much he is God, and he was you know God brought him to this this uh, world to to he was gonna die for our sins. And I'm sitting there, but you know we we only got like a, a two hour movie, right? We can't just have this kid grow up. So the baby represented Jesus the whole time. But if he's gonna stay a baby. And if he was still going to go through what Jesus went through in like fast forward time, I'm sitting there. Oh, my God. Like I said, this is a spoiler thing. I'm like, but but when when this baby. Oh, my God. I, I mean, I, she said straight up, like, like you're not going to. They just want to see the baby. That's what he kept saying. They want to see the baby. They just want to see the baby. Like, could you imagine like like God having an argument with Mother Nature? Like, let's have a let's 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 let's, uh, let's create a son. And my and he'll be me and let's come down to earth and, and Mother Nature's like no no don't do it don't give yourself to them like that I'm like no I don't trust them no they're gonna hurt the baby and he's like yeah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. and you and, and you're like and, and the part that when I knew I had and I knew I was right about the biblical side of it is when they got into that argument and he's like but I'm like give me my baby you you're, you're falling asleep let me let me hold my son but she's like no it's like no. Don't mess with a newborn mother. It's like, no. And he's like, I'm his father. And she's like, well, I'm his mother. And that was the end of that conversation. I was like, oh, damn, it's going down. Mother Nature and God, they about to fight. And, but he just patiently waited. Finally, you know, she fell asleep. She wakes up, the baby's going to take the baby and he gives it to the people. The people want to see the baby. She's like, give me back my baby. Give me back. It's too late. They're passing the baby around. The baby's like peeing all over the place. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, okay, okay. all right, the baby's been alive. He's on, we've already gone past Jesus as a child. You know, we skipped some verses and some books are missing, obviously, from the Bible. And all of a sudden, our Jesus is a grown. He comes from like 15 to 30 out of nowhere. So that must be when the baby's being handed down to the people and like he's teaching and he's doing his thing. Obviously, that's what that symbolizes. The baby's starting to cry. He doesn't like what's going on. This is this is too much. This is too much. Everybody's now starting to claw at him. And I'm sitting there getting tense. This is when this like this is a horror movie. And this is when this this is when the tension really starts to come to me because I'm, I'm a father and I don't want to I don't know what's going on. And I'm like, oh my God, what are they gonna do? They're gonna drop the baby. What the hell are they doing with the baby? What are they doing with the baby? Oh my god, stop, 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 stop doing that with the baby. You gotta support the head. You gotta support the head. Next thing you know, a hand comes up and <laughs> the story of the Bible. I know what happens. I didn't need to see it like that. With a baby? The neck snapping? Oh. And then that was it. Mother was pissed. She took the whole house down. And as the virus started, and that the only thing I can think of is it's supposed to still, like she set the house on fire with everybody in it, everybody dies. And uh, the only thing I can think of is, you know, they say that when the, you know, first we did it with water, got rid of all the people, got them out, and then we gave them a chance to start over. This time, it'll be by fire, and everybody's gone. And there she is, all burnt up. She was right next to the thing that, that she used to set on fire and blow it all the whole house up. She was right there next to it. She, there's no way she could survive this. She's, she's all charted up, still alive. And God, you know he's God now because he's, he's carrying her. And she's like waking up like, what the fuck? Wow, am I still alive? And looking at him, no, not a scratch. Not a scratch. And she's like, what the? Hell are you? I am that I am. I'm like, I knew it. I knew he was God. I knew he was God. No, you sent your baby down to those people, man. They broke your neck. Like, oh my goodness. You gotta, and he's like, I just need your love. I mean, I need you to forgive them. Uh, and at the very end, he still was like, oh, they played up the whole, like, even after all that, he still wanted her love. 
and he destroyed her and then and then it starts all over house goes back in time resets itself is it earth is it another planet who knows right but there's just like the way the movie started with a woman and i knew it wasn't jennifer lawrence she didn't look like jennifer lawrence burning up all you see is a close-up of her face and her blowing up burning up and that was it and then you know then we have jennifer lawrence jennifer lawrence goes through this burns up dies house gets restored and then there's another girl says the exact same thing that jennifer lawrence said at the beginning of the movie hey babe you know and i guess it starts over is it earth again is he is he, is he going through the same motions again and again until maybe something different happens or is it another planet that it, the house represents the house represents earth it has to be eden and then it becomes earth nobody had a car i don't know what's going on in this movie but that's what that was my take on this whole movie i know i'm 100 right and now i'm gonna go look it up later and just to see so then comment below let me know how spot on and let's talk about some of the things that I missed. I know, I mean, this was a straight up spoiler. You should not have watched this at all. I put it in the thing. I said spoiler heavy. This is a let's talk about what the movie was about kind of a thing. And I mean, it blew my mind. So uh, just like with some of the movies, you know, you're never going to get that Passion of the Christ, you know, kind of phenomenon thing happening again between Passion of the Christ and the Noah's Ark and these other movies, these um these Christian uh, heavy movies that only target, you know, that that audience. You're not gonna make millions and millions of dollars like the pat. You're not gonna hit those Passion of the Christ, you know, numbers. It's not gonna happen. There's a formula to it. Now, it should non-religious people be making these movies to crack that code and make that formula? Maybe because you know they. I mean, like Mel Gibson. I mean, he's a religious dude, but he also is a straight up Hollywood dude. He knows movie, uh, story structure, and that's probably why Passion of the Christ did so well. And then you have all these other movies that go straight to DVD and they make a lot of money, but they don't need to make that much money. You know, this is a balance of it. So you want these movies to be mainstream, people are going to argue and be like, they're too mainstream. You want them to stay in their little pocket? Well, they only, well, they, the stories are, uh, suck and they only in it, they're only going to entertain, you know, hardcore religious people. And even they're going to only watch it once. So there's got there's a balance and they're and i think they're trying to find that balance with all these other religious movies that have been coming out lately with christian bell starring in them and all that stuff and they're trying i think they're trying to make these religious movies a genre like the comic book genre is out there but will it succeed i don't know but knowing what i know about the movie or feeling the way i feel about that movie like, like we just literally saw god and mother nature just get it on i mean even in one part of the movie she straight up tells him straight up you don't me anymore yeah but yeah like, yeah not a man i'm like what are you, are you really broke it down to like uh, simplified it to some marital issues i'm like it's, she has to be mother nature i'm not gonna i'm not gonna buy that it was god you know she's the holy spirit and then you know that that, that she had to be mother nature it's the only reason that that movie had to be called mother the way it was it was like I'm thinking it's like, oh, you don't mess with Mother Nature kind of a thing. And it's, I don't know. But that's how I felt about the movie. Uh, let me give, let me, now let's go back into my whole rating system. on it. Let's say, okay, if I'm with a woman on this movie, this is a first date kind of a situation. You're going to probably get, how many makeouts? How many times you're going to stop? You know, like the beginning of the movie, I'll be like, it'll start to bore me. I'm going to look over and be like, all right, I'm going to make out. And all of a sudden, you're like, nah, 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 nah. So you get one make out. In the middle of the movie, you're kind of interested. Oh, that was weird. Oh, what's going on with that? Then it kind of slows down again. You feel like, like this movie's been on for a while now. You're going to probably make out again. And then by the end of the movie, you know, you're, probably, you're going to get a third one in there. So I gave it about three and a half make outs out of five. Now, it's a reverse thing. That's not good. Movie's real good and it keeps your attention. You ain't gonna make out at all. So the less makeouts, the better. It's got three and a half. So three and a half out of five is my rating. So yeah, uh, you ain't gonna smash after this. So you you better already be in a serious relationship and it better not be the first date because watching a movie like this is gonna probably be like, yeah, I think it's um I think it's too soon for us right now. You think you need to take me home? So yeah, don't no, don't this. You better already be in a relationship, like for a while. If you're gonna take, don't don't make this the first date, kind of a movie. 
Cause you ain't going, you're not gonna smash. Uh, so that's what I, that's my system right there. Like, like let's let's uh, let's keep it. Let's keep it. I'm gonna keep that for a while. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that rating system going. But uh, overall, after knowing what I know about the movie, honestly, I give it. A, it's a positive review on the positive side of it. On real rip review side of it, I'll give it a three and a half out of five, like like uh, stars, I guess, or three out of three out of five. Like on a on a star review on a on a regular uh, talking to the media's review, the the, the acting was uh, was outstanding. The effects, the everything that was just blowing my mind about it was on point. It's just the whole, the whole, oh man, str struggling with there's that struggle, and you, you know you put the earth in that kind of a perspective, kind of a thing, and you're like, if you don't know going in, if you watch this and spoil yourself before watching the movie, you done did yourself a disservice. Anybody that you, if you've seen this movie and you want to suggest it to somebody, don't tell them about what it's about. Don't. Tell them it's interesting. Tell them it's weird. Tell them, you th I think you might like it, whether you know it's true or not. Get people to go into this movie and watch it without knowing what's really, what's really going on. And then get their honest review, uh, reaction from it. And that's, uh, that's my plug on this. I can't wait to see the next Jennifer Lawrence movie. Um, wow. I think they should have called it motherfucker. Why y'all fucking my house up? So, till next time, guys. Hit the comment button. Uh, hit the uh, like button. Um, and tell me what you guys thought about my little uh, my little explanation about what this movie is about. If you haven't already become a subscriber, what the hell are you waiting for? I mean, I'm, I know I don't make as many of these as I used to, but uh, damn man, I'm trying. I'm still going out and seeing a lot of movies. It was going to be a Kingsman review, but too late. No, I let too much time go by. Thor Ragnarok, definitely. So when I make the next review, let's keep it right here, guys. Should I keep it going? Should I tell you how many times you're probably going to make out in the theater? It gives you a kind of perspective of whether or not you should go to a movie and with a date. And, you know, I'll give you my two cents on it. Or or maybe I don't have any game. Maybe you would, Maybe you would have gotten some, whether you saw Mother or not. Fair enough. Till next time, guys.